Hey there, I'm going to try to make a fitting for a tool post grinder for the 7x14 inch mini lathe. I'm going to use this 1.5 inch by 1.5 inch aluminum square stock and we're going to mount this rotary tool. As you can see it's got the motor and the flex shaft to it. Uh, so let's see how it goes. Now this is the four jaw chuck. It's different. You probably haven't seen me use it yet. It's different, obviously. It has one more jaw than the three jaw chuck. As you can tell, it's also much larger. So I can hold bigger stock in it, including in this through hole right here, which is handy for certain projects. Also, because it has four jaws, clearly, I can hold square things nicely. Uh, this will accomplish two things. One, the biggest difference between the four jaw and the three jaw is the fact that each one of these chucks rotates separately. On the three jaw, you turn the chuck key and they all compact down or open up nicely, which is great. Super convenient, very handy, fast. On this one, they move separately. So, for facing this like that, or like this, or like that, uh, doing things that would typically be considered uh, eccentric, not concentric, very handy for that. It also allows you to dial in something a lot more accurately than with the three jaw. So I believe this would be the first time I've used this on screen, but uh, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time actually dialing this in. In fact, really, I'm just gonna get an eyeball close. What we'll be doing on each face of this, all six sides of this rectangular piece, what we'll be doing is just doing a facing cut just to true it up and make it true flat. So really, it does not matter. It's not a critical dimension getting this actually dead center in any form other than making sure that these flats are parallel to each other. So that's what we're going to do in this operation. Well, there we have it. Four sides nice and trued up. After uh, long deliberation, I decided to go ahead and leave the ends as they are. This one's the more rough one from the saw cut. I just, it's not critical to the part, and it would actually, because this is so long, it would make for some pretty challenging rigidity facing off these ends sticking out of the chucks. And it, it's not necessary to the part. Really, the only reason I flattened these up is to ensure that they're perfectly parallel and square as well as to get a nice flat reference surface for the tool post on the lathe for the uh, for this to tighten down to the compound. So this is really all it needed to be. As you can see, the the rings aren't even perfectly centered on the faces, and it, it like it, that doesn't matter. That's not the part that that makes a difference. I don't know what that is right there? Low spot. 
but uh, yeah, this isn't this isn't super super critical. Okay, so there's our mounting hole, and there's where the tool will go. Marked a little bit right here, and what I've done is gone ahead and measure from the bottom of the tool holder to the top of the tool hole, and that was 1.290 inches, so subtract 0.5 from that to get the center of our hole. Oops, gosh darn it. Well, that could be uglier, but it could be prettier. Oh, well. Well, that's good. All right, let's see if it works. I got this piece of 7,000th uh, shim stock in here because this hand piece is actually about 0.990 or so. Alright, that's solid. Let's uh, chuck up a tool in our new active tool post. This is uh, basically a little Dremel style milling cutter. This one's a little chewed up, but uh, should be good for a test. So for this little example, I've got the lathe off. I've got the chuck disengaged from the drive. I wish I had a way to, to lock and then also index the chuck, so that'll be a future project. But for now, we're just going to work on the workpiece as it's stationary. What's doing it? Let's get a better view.
And that's just with a really chewed up bit. Mm. Lots of little chips. This is a ball shaped uh, cutter. Let's actually try it under power. Is a rough finish, but it seems to work. Well, it's an interesting little uh, little experiment here. Looks like there's a bit of bit of play in the actual chuck of the rotary tool, so it's not going to be super precise, but it's a fun little project. Seems to work, and uh, could could be something. I could use it for making straight grooves, straight uh, cuts, and otherwise round stock without a mill. If I had a mill, none of this would have been necessary. Anyway, thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe if you liked it.